Hello, what's up y'all? It's me, Tasha C. And in this particular video, I will be recapping, reviewing Ephobia, Etopia, Ephobia, <laughs> um, the season one, episode two. And shout out to my YouTube fam. And if you like what you see, like you so far, you can just head if you subscribe, you're not already part of my YouTube fam. Yo, we span, we span the family. And also, don't forget to hit the notification bell that, you know, they got three options. You can have all customized or, you know, whatever. But don't forget also to like, because the more likes gets out, the more this can be out here. Because it's, it's an interesting show, but it's not a lot of people who are reviewing it, I don't think. Oh. But anyways, y'all, this is getting more interesting. Yeah, it's still shock value and stuff like that, but it's like... Hmm, how's it gonna be by the end of the season? Sorry to rant like this. I'm up. I did my. I still gotta upload my VT review. I watched that four and a half hours, and then on top of that, it's four nineteen more. It's one of those nights I act, I had one of those iced coffee special drinks uh, thing with jigs a little bit late night. So I wanted to go ahead since I was already up anyway. Um. To just go ahead and at least do this review tonight or this morning. Because in a minute, I'm going to be hearing birds chirping over here. Okay, so anyway, y'all. It's it's really interesting even how it starts. Again, we have Rue who is, again, a narrator. And she talks as if at times. Now, like the half of the show, she was not narrating anymore. It's almost like she... Like I said, it's like an outer body experience, time traveling thing. And then she, I guess, goes back to seeing it from her side or whatever. And so she's a part-time narrator slash, you know, as she says, she feels like a psycho when she's out. And one of the clues also paying attention to is that for one thing, this is the second time in this episode that she wears shades to camouflage or try to hide some of the side effects you know, probably, probably, you know, when her, you know, dealing with her addictions and maybe not want some on the face and all that stuff, okay? So, now, we're dealing with the first week, first day back at school, okay? And she on the bus and she already leaned in it and then she's like, now, again, like I said, there are times there's choppy because you're kind of seeing it from the angle of Rue getting high. And, um... We also see, like I said, uh, like I, um, like I said, um, from this story. Now, interesting enough, y'all, and like I said, look, even though I'll forget some things out, it's probably a good thing because y'all should watch this show. <laughs> uh, but you know what? I also noticed, y'all. Now, out of the few shows I see HBO and stuff, they if it's an MA rating, NCT, N <laughs> it's an NCT. I'm telling you, told y'all, NC seventeen rating. You usually don't have a viewer's question device in front of it. And this time, they got it before even the show starts. And then on top of that, I had read some stuff when I was trying to look for the preview of the show before it started. And um, the guy who plays McKay or is, a, is an actor. He also, i never seen the movie yet, ordered the book, The Hate You Give. Um, he's an actor, has been in that film and, and so forth. But also, the guy that originally was supposed to play was named Astro. He left and quit before the pilot. So that whole scene with him and Cassie, he's next to me, all this stuff, that was reenacted again because, now, these are all sites. Now, allegedly, it was like something, uh, he, uh, Astro, the actor, and ra rapper, so he was on X Factor one of the seasons, um, the American version, I think. And uh, he didn't like, there was rumors he didn't like nothing about the script or maybe some experimentation, whatever going on, experimentation that the guy didn't approve because they're not really talking about it. And, but, you know, they're kind of keeping the lips, uh, lips sealed. And so, uh, there's an, now it also was controversial because it was supposed to be written by 80 penises and they said some Bible would be 30 penises and then somebody was saying, look at the thing, talking about it was 17 penises. And I'm like, I really kind of counted like it was round 10 or whatever. Okay. Some of them were this and some, <laughs> or I don't know. Okay. So we're going like, like I said, there's some scenes. We go back and forth again from rehab and six or eight angles. Cause we all know the stuff is choppy. Okay. I know we're going five minutes in now. 
we've got some background story about Nate. Forgot to mention in the last episode, um, a recap, that Nate also, we already know, has this aggressive nature. And on top of that, one time, like, um, Rue had explained that she had a problem with Nate. Didn't really have a problem with Nate until he tried to, you know, finger, penetrate, you know, a cat area by force or something like that. And one thing I, you know, we don't know yet, we seem to notice, is that Rue seems to have an addiction to drugs and so forth and self, basically self-medicating. But we don't know if she has a crush on anybody or sexual orientation, nothing like that. At least what I see so far, that that's not the whole thing of the story. We don't even know even if she's a virgin or not. Not to say that, but I'm just saying it's like, you see the angle of like Rue dealing, using drugs to deal with things of um, in her life. And that's kind of the only angle that you kind of see her as so far. Um, but anyway, we get a little bit more heck. We get a lot more of this this episode of Nate. Now, Nate, they showed him around 11 years old. And again, this is where Rue is narrating and giving a background story of like where this aggression comes from. I first thought, y'all, that Nate had no idea about his dad and what it was going right. So he went to, I guess, the MacBook, you know, he had a key and he found all his dad's, you know, you know, I came from Mary we had v, um, uh, HS, you know, tapes, you know, vi uh, video cassettes. And some people probably, if they are watching this and they from, you know, Generation Z or, you know, <laughs> I'm like, what is that? What is a video cassette? <laughs> Just like, what the heck? What, what the heck is that? I wish y'all, I actually had one to show y'all. But, um, maybe next time. Okay, but I'm still talking. So, because I can prove, like, yeah, they, there's one exists. Or, this, y'all, is a video set. Um, it has 16, it's a video HS, and they have different hours. Some are two hours, some are four hours, six hours. You record things on here, and I ain't gonna lie, I was one of those kids who used to sometimes find my dad's movies, uh, this is somebody recording here. I, is this color purple? Okay, okay, well, none of my business. But yeah, this is a video. This is where we used to record things on here, y'all. Before we went to the CD player, then went to the MPD player and stuff like that. Now, like, basically just streaming stuff in cloud form. But anyway, y'all, <laughs> just like y'all probably wonder, where, what the hell is a floppy disk? <laughs> if I can find one, I'll show y'all the things that it's But anyway, well, Google it, y'all. Google it. Bing, Bing or whatever. You know, so, so he checked and found these movies that was on CDs and they were color coded on the cases, plastic cases, whatever, right? And when you see the stuff, I first thought maybe there were movies that just was like, you know, a low budget in a hotel room, but they still, you know, are, you know, porns under some type of company or something, right? But just like the natural homegrown ones, right? And we see here, again, like you see a man, and he's doing the same actions he did to Jules earlier to a young man where every time a daddy, you know, put in his hole, I'm not going on as a detail. And then you see you know, Smash and the virtual scene. You see more videos and another thing. They, some details that kind of cop out, but you hear the noise or certain actions. And, you know, from a distance seeing that. And you see this child, Nate is young, up here looking. And then you even see... That they showing is that so the daddy got daddy a uh, homegrown porn and has it set up so he had it because one time he thought he heard his dad coming in to put it all in section of it so he had like I said the CDs core do I have something over here the, the you know the CDs cases up together organized so he knows that his dad is up here with me and he even had another trans woman. Or girl, we don't know, you know what I'm saying? He might not care, okay. Well, uh, a trans, because he was asking her, you know, like, uh, are you a woman? She said, you know, most of the part of me is, or something like that. And, you know, but he has recorded several times. I don't know, Jewel might be hidden on the iPhone, but he didn't record, at least when we gather, their encounter, okay. So anyway, his dad comes in to talk to him, but he doesn't talk to him like he knows that he has seen his secret. He comes to him 
and basically like you know people you're going to be great people are going to be basically jealous of you blah 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 you know i you know blah 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 you have to deal with that you know the, the haters i'm paraphrasing of course so anyways you go, go up to it here and he fast forward to when he gets older and kind of explaining, of course, him being so sexually aggressive and violent is knowing the secret about his dad, but what we've seen, at least so far, that he has not vented yet to anybody about his dad, but it has affected his behavior. But like I say, he already knows that something up with his dad, okay? They talk briefly also later on in the episode about his, he has an older brother, and that ain't ish as far as Rue is never narrating, they both, the brothers, seem to have problems with the mom, and I don't know if both the brothers know about what the dad, uh, the dad is, and whatever issues that they have with the mom, because they really didn't go into detail to show, like, they're doing a family photo, but it hasn't shown any interaction yet with the mom, and then you see, one time, Nate, as the age he is now, is looking in the same room, the the dirty room, I like to call it, or the office where he keeps his homegrown material. And uh, the dad was like, what are you looking at? I was just going to say hi. I mean, I was going to say good night. And the dad's like, good night. And so it's just like, oh my gosh. Okay, so mm, the wheels are turning. So we'll get on to Nate in, in a minute, right? How it flows. Because like I said, some things is choppy. And here's another thing. So you got the first day of school. And like I said, um, Rue's character is in the class. I don't know if in the gym with a the theater. And when they're talking about the introductions, which I ain't gonna lie, a lot of times the introductions, even say if you take a college grad course and you go for school, whatever, sometimes it is kind of annoying. It's like, I don't want to talk. Like, even y'all, if y'all take some of these classes online, they even want you sometimes to type in the introduction, even in the form, form. Like, what's your name? What's your major? What, blah, blah. what do you want to do? Like, blah, blah, blah. Why you this? Why you took the class? You had to force take class. You need to take the class. It's a party. <laughs> so, anyways, she wants to lean, and the, the, uh, the woman decides to make, you know, like, lean, like, laying on the floor, because they're already on the floor in the gym, in the gym. And the woman's like, okay, you got to go up there first, Rue. And she wants her, you, everybody got to say five minutes about what stood out to them or something. Re recollect some some uh thing that happened in the summer right and rule of course already had a summer and already before it even got there her and Jules walking around and somebody asked oh you oh you still alive so this is why she's um, or having you called ghosts and stuff like that because of course it's obviously a small town whatever it, even though suburban area is like it seems everybody knows that rule was um um had old deed and some people think that she is literally just walking dead or whatever and like I said, Jules is her new friend, and she, they're just like, okay, that's some BS. And then also, Doris, so you see Maddie, you know, the crew, and it's still, who is the fourth person? Was that Lexi or somebody else? I don't know. But you got Casey, Maddie, and Kat. And they were talking about um the girl, the girl, you know, try to slash her, try to commit suicide or something. I didn't honestly hear that part, okay? But there was like, well, y'all was, y'all was smashing or something like that, Cassie and Maddie was, and, um, a little fast forward, Maddie um, decided to tell them that she blacked out. But no, I'm surprised that nobody, that you seen people with the cameras that had, when she saw her, when she was bouncing up and down the water on top of the guy, having sex with him in the pool. And it's just, also too, it shows like how it's so easy where people get comfortable about putting stuff online even you don't want it on there just like uh i forgot to mention my rule when she was between the ages 8 to 12 she had the class she when she had a panic attack some kids said it helping her they're up there recording online and somebody says a cyber room i'm gonna rape you look up something like that to her and she left that alone it was some crazy stuff but back yet okay maddie maddie ends up telling her girls instead of just flat out saying that she had sex with the guy she claiming she blacked out and then she going to tell also Nate about that she blacked out. Then we go, like I said, let me just go up ahead when she's talking to Rue. And Rue, obviously, and Lexi have the same class. But she's sitting right next to Lexi, nothing like that. It's like they had, a, they're more so childhood friends. But they don't really click as much as this. Because like I said, she was spending her whole time with Jules. So to make a long story short, she sat there and she kept saying, I couldn't recollect. And you see fast forward when she OD, you see from a sister angle. She was talking about first she was trying to say her and her mom and sister one time a song. And you see fast forward when they were in her, 
um, in when they were their rehab, forced when we had, after which we have, and she's like, I can't do this. And first she said that once to the woman, I couldn't remember. And she told that to the teacher. She's just like, just try and be relaxed. And I'm like, you can tell me about body language, even whether it got something to do with her, whatever the issues is that she was uncomfortable. And I'm like, okay, why would this teacher just stop and just say, okay, whatever? Because she may not have been comfortable, but she was not. And then, um, and then y'all, she is, you know, starting to cry and stuff because everything with the summer is she's up there dealing with rehab and following with effects with OD and just all this stuff. And she just started crying. She was like, I can't do this. And some should say in the audience, like, uh, but she, it must be dangerous. And Lexi actually uh, took up for her and was like, you know, you are effing rude. And Rue runs, runs the stage, she goes to the bathroom. The way of dealing with that issue is she has one of them pills she got, you know, on a tab from uh, Fez. Crushes it and is about to try to snort it. And Lexi, Lexi and she's paranoid. Uh, Rue's paranoid, so she thinks it's might come out. So she ends up blowing off the um off the pill. Then she throws the rest and flushing up. So she's mad at Lexi from like, are you stupid? Blah, blah. Just basically getting mad at her. And you know, one of the side effects usually of drugs, you know, some cases, or substance abuse, period, because it could be even alcohol. Some people can't deal with alcohol, can't hold their alcohol, and, you know, like the mean anger side, it's one stream to another. So you, you, uh, you know, it, it, substance abuse, it, alcohol, be, you know, could be something else. So she even checks, unless, unless it was, she's like, you know, why are you so worried about me? We have been friends, friends, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, well, now you need me to pee to probably clear up a day for, you know, to camouflage your drug use, uh, wh whatever. And we were, we were friends. Why are you like this, mother? So she basically walk out. And they even showed a scene where her mom, you know, was confronting her about the drug use, and she ended up knocking the picture off a wall, about to cut her mom the glass, but then she didn't cut her off, she could have cut herself, and I guess they were just, it was just really a lot, but you were just seeing from the angle of that. Then they jump and flash forward another scene where her and Jules were up there getting high. You see them under the tent. I don't know if they, the glitter was actually on there. They put it on there prior to their faces, or were they seeing glitter when she was getting high, because she convinced Jules was just, Jules was like, didn't you just come out of rehab or whatever? Mm-hmm. Out of breath. So anyway, we have another scene later on that McKay is, comes to see Cassie, the mom sitting up there again with a drink in her hand. She might have to go one of them AA meetings as well. She's saying you're like this, y'all, like, uh, so, you know, Cassie is smitten by you, blah, blah, blah. And McKay is in college. It's first year of college, whatever, freshman. But he's still cool and with the high school whatever. So anyways, uh, Cassie, them, she ended up, Cassie was able to get her mom out of place, whatever, and she ends up talking to McKay. McKay want to sit there and talk about, you know, I did all these touchdowns, I did all this, whatever, woo, 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 I don't know why the coach ain't got me up front or whatever, and, you know, whatever, and he was like, I, you know, I did everything, did this, I watched Varsity Blues 20 times. Why is this man, like, you know what I mean, she's sitting here trying, you know, Lick his, kiss his knuckles and stuff, and God told me he was about to give him a ride. She, she said something about, well, like, you know, you want to smash, I'll, I'll just say that, well, like, but he's like, why is everything going to be tied to sex? Because she got off and she felt a little comfortable. She said, like, my bad, basically, and it kind of, like, faded off from that point. But anyways, like I said, they also talked about Nate and Maddie's relationship, and also saying about Nate and all this picky stuff he had about him. He wanted women to be not even hairless, whatever, hairy or hairy, period. He wanted, you know, them to be wear, nair, wear short shorts. He didn't want, he wanted the most spin war. He had all these things, you know, no cankles, stuff like that or whatever. And he liked it, Maddie. And the first thing who said is nair, and they put out, he liked her because she was hairless. So anyways, and he, she, was, she was Pope Virgin and all this other stuff. So we have another problem. There's a video, Maddie ended up seeing a video to Kat later on. Kat also was talking to somebody, Nick Manuel, or something like that. So I don't know how it's supposed to come out, but they started talking to flirting, whatever. Blah, blah, blah. I'll probably go do this another, what, 10 or 11 minutes. I ain't trying to stay on and no, talk. So um, around the meantime, Maddie sends a video. And I'm thinking it's a video with Pete filming her. I know there was no video up, y'all, just let y'all know, of Maddie and what she was doing. It's a video of Kat. So the a ho she ended up giving virginity to has put, basically, as far as I'm putting it, legally is put up, you know, him smashing back. You can't see her face. 
she still has clothes on to get you know they screw the clothes on and um she's trying to of course clear, uh, clear this out she sees some people looking at her or whatever the case was but like i said it's like maybe because maddie is more popular or something like that i was scratching my head like ain't this something cats being shamed and stuff and yet maddie okay never mind but maddie was what's going on so anyways, she goes to one of the 24K's brothers and let them know, like, yo, y'all got clued this up, whatever. At first, Wes was like, okay, we all kids. She's like, you know, this is child pornography, right? And he's like, we all kids. So I don't know if Wes is, but Wes was a loser for that one, okay? But, uh, I don't know if Wes go to that school or not or whatever. So she basically let him know, I'm going to go to the police. This is the stuff where, and she's like, you're going to do something else for me as well. So she basically went around, I don't remember Cage, the 20 brothers' names, um, one of the 20 brothers, end up you know going around oh no that's not cat no that's not cat she even told friends just like uh maggie up there line is saying that she was consent of the guy which technically is depending on the state stuff like that he was over the age 22 it was who well, i got possibly really a strong chance of being statutory rape um because turn out we found out she was 17 we'll get to that in a minute so here is where the issue cat end up end up getting um whoever 20 was to buy all this makeup and stuff like that they did end up taking the video down and then she finds later on that the video is still up but it's in a different language and she sees first she's oh my gosh but when she sees all the responses how she's basically getting all this love so to speak and people men lusting out for her people period because you never know uh um and then she signs up so it's like why she about to do some webcam stuff start getting paid? i'm like oh my goodness so um also earlier well before the end of the week um the principal talked came to talk to her about there's possibly i never see this video but it's a thing about but still it wasn't her fault for turning the video in the first place and then she was able to get out of that of uh, the principal or whoever guidance counsel whatever um talking about it because she was like so you assume just because even with this tape that ignored that is automatically me just because i'm plus size i never expect that i mean body you're trying to body shame me that's not me in the fair i'm not the only person you know who is a full figure you know a, a woman you know so he was like oh never mind mm -mm, never mind it left it alone so we'll see from that and um so also nate is planning revenge but in the meantime we see jules and uh and rural meeting up talking by writing after school was over with. I don't see nobody with no books. We'll try to bite her to dinner. Uh, um, but um sorry y'all, like I said, it's for something morning. And but uh Jules explains she always like be with her daddy, blah blah blah, and stuff like that. But she's like I said, she's beginning to like Jules more. Like I said, especially they had a little high experience or whatever. But also between this time. Jewel gets a response from a neck down profile, but with some shorts on, um, guy named a uh, shy boy, whatever. He don't want no hookups or nothing like that. He just wants something that's real. But he was a male, male but that's the thing. So she's been talking to this guy back and forth. Okay, we'll see later on. I'll tell you, like, what does this mean? Okay. So, anyways, we see later on. Bob's talking about this. McKay ends up like saying sorry later on to Casey towards the end of the episode and she, he was like let me see that you're asleep and she just showed she's fully covered and then he's like you know no nudes and you know he's expecting her to do nudes because there's already nudes of her out there and she even tried to say even like because he probably like he apologized earlier for you know what he did and she's like i understand and then he's like convince her to go ahead and be like can you do some nudes and she's like no it's too late and he was like please blah blah, blah i'm horny you know whatever so she you know, clothes is draped between her and her sister's room. Maybe they must be big room. They sleep on both different sides or whatever, one of them type of rooms. And she, you know, you don't see her being new, but you know, she look at it, flash, 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 flash. And I'm wondering, what is McKay really going to do with them nudes? But they never show him after, you know, that awkwardness they in when he was over her house. So now we got nate and nate is on a mission he's trying to get maggie back he offers a ride to school she ha, ha, i'm oh you oh, oh yes i'm sorry you're just so silly whatever so he did take her home and he's trying to offer to take her another date and she like i have to think about it text me and then he also was a part he already followed the guy tyler because he believes now since she blacked out that 
the guy raped her, raped, but like I said, remember Sagittarius, because you know the thing is, even though your age consists 17, um, some places are 16, about, there's still, I think there's some little guidelines, stuff like that. So, anyways, he finds Katana, I don't know, he gps him, whatever, I don't know what the heck it was, but he up there, obviously, he must be by himself, whatever, a college kid too, but we're getting that in a minute. Also, here's another go thing, you know, Kate Rule went to this N.A. meeting um, at a church, and she ends up, y'all, this is just terrible, but it shows, like, people had also been naming it, so the game of the game of the words, and because it was a couple times this happened. So, in the case of Rule, she needs, this is to be signed, I don't know if it's court, ain't on court order, or something her mom is making her do, or, you know, the rehab place is making her do, whatever, um, but she's missed a couple of days at least like four or five times because i count the signature so she's talking to the guy i don't know if he's over it or something or at least keep records or something like that or not and she's like could you sign this you know both times i need and he's like no pay attention y'all he was like morally that is wrong and i won't do that and then she was like well i'll you know you know blow your balloons you know uh <laughs> bully balloons and he didn't say nothing about morals then he up here look to the right, you know, looking both ways before he crossed the street, and he like, what are you gonna do in the car? She was like, you creep, you know, whatever, uh, you know, I'm underage, underage and stuff, basically, right, and jail be just written all over, okay, and so she was able to get him, of course, to sign that paper without even doing a dirt thing, but she sure was able to expose him, and she didn't look out for this darn creepy behind on the stuff, just nasty MF, Old enough to be her daddy or a great uncle. <laughs> so, anyways, um, you got seen, and also there was a back of a scene how she uh, she also kind of said how she got I don't know how all the drugs, but how she got addicted to oxycotton, and it shows the sad scene when she was taking care of her dad because the nurse beat her mom had to work a second job to cover the medical bills, and she sat in the room with dad helping him take medicine and stuff, and he had a bunch of medication, and she asked about the oxycotton and some other stuff. And she started taking it, and that's how she became addicted. But it's also not just also dealing with the illness or mental illness that she might have or all have in self medication, but also the issues with probably losing her dad and watching him go through all the stages of sickness and unfortunately losing his life. And I know it's like she's going to certain things, but I'm like, does she have a therapist at all? She goes to still, because I didn't see nobody since she was five years old. Uh, ooh, I'm just like, how's this going to turn out, y'all? Okay, so. Um, then we got a scene that she goes to, ends up going to Fez's house, I guess, wherever it's staying. So that, I don't know if that's a little brother, blah, blah, blah. But it is true, y'all. It wasn't, that wasn't an illusion at the time. He ends up going over there. She's like, I need drugs. And he's like, no, you don't need to be here at the time. And then she sees across, you know, the room is like their relative, they're in the, like almost in the hospital bed in the house and I have the course. And she's like, I need some drugs. And he's like, no, y'all, you got to go to Godfather's about to come out or something like that comes here, blah, blah, blah. And he showing her, you know, showing the gun, making sure it's loaded, blah, 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 in between the mattresses. So, and y'all, it was really sad and uncomfortable. And you see the guy, I forgot who the actor was, but I've seen him before. I've been so seen him before, I had his, all his tattoo face along with, you know, the sidekick or whatever. And even though he posed to be, you know, his seller of the drugs, it's like, fans need to get somebody else about sell or start cooking up his own drug stuff somewhere. I'm not suggesting that drug, you don't sell drugs, but it's like, you had to go do all that, you buy from him, and it's like some bully that take your life and call you a bit in somebody else's, in your own house, and you buying for them, make this about this. So, so, um, he sees um, because he told him, be, he wanted her to be cool before they got there, because, um, I don't know how, why the young boy, like I said, that really was a young boy, it wasn't like an illusion that we were seeing from Rue, he really is a young boy, and we still see him tattooed, I'm like, what is going on here, I mean, I know there's some young kids who be in the game and been around the block five times, and they still got their baby teeth in and stuff like that, they're also ones that they young as heck, but they still are advanced and grown soon, but yeah, so, um, it turns out we are gonna spur it in. We are gonna but get back to the Nate group part real quick. We got where he's saying that's his little sister, and you can tell already it's like there's some grimness with him. He selling him some some pill, and he's trying to get some Fandol, Finny Fandol, that stuff that been killing people and people at OV with as well. So he already has a knife already to 
Um, he sat down already, already so-called greeted himself to rule whatever, right? And then he has a knife and has the fend all and makes her basically take it, even though first Vance was like, no, like, man, just leave her alone, somebody. I mean, that I don't want to buy that stuff, blah, blah. And basically, in a way, force him not only to buy the stuff, but is also if he could because it could have went where regardless if it's bought it or not or didn't or didn't have enough money probably was probably was looking forward to probably trying to uh, uh, sexually assault her and so he's rubbing on black when he had already made the girl take it and he's like give me 300 and then 900 i'm surprised Fez. first i thought Fez was gonna take the gun to shoot the, to shoot the guys so they left so he ended up calling somebody and it turns out later on too, because he brought up in the first episode saying about you know about the new girl who looked like Sailor Moon something like that. So I don't know if Jules be buying weed or anything from him, blah blah blah. But like I said, Jules been back and forth texting Mr. Shy guy said, How you doing, blah blah blah. At least I know you who are you? Shiny moons, blah blah blah. She be texting them. She don't even know what the heck it is. I don't even know if Jules shows her profile or did she show in her pics that she is a friend. She might have, because that's why um Dominant Daddy was interested in her because he already knew that she was a trans girl okay so maybe they already know that so um yeah so she's just talking to guy whatever and uh so nate is on a mission nate is on a mission to punish because there was a sequence that show if he had to protect maddie what he would do in the streams he protect her because to save her innocence, to be dominant, to show he's macho and he is the man. And, you know, he's 12. He up here already lifting, lifting lights and getting rid of his body fat. So he had some of the body issues and he had to prove he was strong. Rue uh, also had body issues as well, too, unfortunately, as well. So I don't know if she had any type of eating disorders. But she was also dealing with that as well. Showing like she's in the mirror trying to suck in her invisible stomach and stuff. It was just sad. So... But he goes, like I said, the guy's house, whatever, sitting up in his living room, drinking a Budweiser, some of them, and threatening them, no, like, you know, so you did something, you know, you were with her, so did you rape, blah, 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 this and that, and you're not going to tell authorities, because I can prove it in room, so he took him to his room, and then, y'all, I ain't going to lie, y'all, but the part when he tells the guy to get on his knees, I'm like, wait a minute now, it, is he going to uh, smack him with his leg? Am I, <laughs> you know what I mean? What, what is going on here? So he ended up beating the guy. They didn't show the beating. We even have said, did you rape, you rape it, blah, 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 blah. So he's trying to retaliate for that. Then you see a later scene, you see him taking a shower, and Nate is still in the guy. So the guy got a bloody nose, whatever, probably. I'm surprised he breathe. He's still, you know, breathing, knocked out, he's still there, I guess. And he ends up even using that, his axe brain, everything. And, you know, just using, uh, you know, change his clothes, fresh new clothes, and end up leaving. And he and Maddie ends up going with David, which is creepy as heck. They end up bowling out and blah, blah, blah. And then they somewhere in between, I don't even know they end up having any sex and, you know, or any of that and above. But he's asking her about something. You, you smashed, had sex with that dude. Was it good or not? And she's something like, you know, what does it matter if it's good or not? Whatever it doesn't matter. Did you like it, blah, blah, blah. And I don't think he told her. I first thought he was going to fly out and tell her, like, you know, I was, you did you know, retaliated, you know, ain't nobody gonna hurt you, I told you I kept that promise, blah, 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 so he ends up dropping Maggie off, and, you know, he gives her gifts, ugh, so I don't know if she put a lot of up, but she's in the window, something like that, uh, but she ended up closing, and he ends up going about his business, and so Jules, like I said, was crying, but Fez ends up taking Jules, now she back again, Rue is back at Jules' house, I don't know if he's supposed to sleep it off. I know something he told the young boy, brother, whatever, um, to get some solution, I guess, just in case she OD. And because she's so weak or whatever. Because already, like I said, she was on the couch, blah, blah, blah. And the guy made that. They basically, Fez paid like $1,000 to take this stuff. Because he already told the young boy after them creep a-holes left, um, you know, to flush that stuff down the toilet. He didn't want it in the first place. And because Rue's like, blah, 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 he was already rubbing on lips. So, like, I was rubbing on whatever, but like, so she was out of it, somewhat still there, but barely. Because she barely had to pray for God. You know, I know I've been doing a bunch of stuff, whatever, and I've been, a, you know, something like that. But please don't let me die. So, I don't know if she's just going to rest off the effects at Jules' house. But while she over there, somewhat there, or nodding off. And then, like I said, we got Jules. How's your day? Blah blah blah. What is your name? And he says Tyler. And so you just see 
it like is going over to the next room where the location is. I thought that was the Nathaniel guy because they paid attention to um her. Now that's what I, I don't think that Nathaniel was a West. Uh, yeah, because I think the guy who ended up doing that files with the cat was named was okay. It, it, it's different. Guy. You know, let me know in the comments. But I was like, who the heck is that? And then they turn. And the Tyler guy who is texting Jules is Nate. Yeah, that's, I'm like, what? What the heck? We're only episode two here. Wow. First we see a bunch of penises, then we got a dickhead at the end, just on some other stuff. I... <sighs> so, anyway, y'all, hugs and love, y'all take care. I'll see y'all in the next review. I'll probably, like I said, it'll be Monday or Tuesday the next one, whatever, because, uh, yeah. <laughs> like I said, it it may be a show that deals with too much, but it's, I can't stop, person, I can't stop watching them. Like, where the heck is this going? <laughs> All right, take care.